Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. I'll just zoom in the screen a little more so that you can see. Okay, so for today's class, we are going to learn about the demonstration from the unit three, and the name of the experiment is depth perception. A basic description about depth perception was discussed during the class. In simple terms, depth perception means seeing the world in three dimensions. It's just not a picture which we see about the world. We see a dimensional picture. We know how far or how close or how wide or how narrow the world is around us. We just don't see the world in a flat image. The perception of the world in different dimensions is depth perception. The depth perception is often measured in x, y, and z axis. This helps a person know how far or how close or, or what is the dimension of the object is. The main definition of depth perception is given here. I'll read it aloud, then I'll explain it. Depth perception is the ability to see the world in 3D, although the image that strike the retina are two-dimensional. That allows to judge distance, seeing the objects in 3D, which enable us to estimate their distance. As per the definition given here, depth perception is our ability to see the world in three dimensions. Three dimensions means seeing closeness and farness, and that is the dimension. Even though in our brain, uh, the information is registered from our retina, it's in the form of a 2D. 2D simply means it is a flat surface through which uh, the information is stored. However, because of color contrast or uh, the shift in color, our mind is able to understand the world under three dimensions. The information as such is stored under two dimension only, but based on the color, texture, shade, the mind tries to understand the world under three dimensions. The main characteristic of a depth perception, please note the main characteristics of depth perception is given below. We can't always see it as a characteristic. We can also say the importance of depth perception is given below. Uh, depth perception helps us to uh, perceive the world again, as mentioned in three dimensions. Uh, it is possible to know how far or close an object is based on this characteristic. The height and width of an object is also understood through depth perception. Uh, depth perception is a primary learned concept in us. So yeah, that's something which you may not know. Uh, depth perception is a primary concept. So that is uh, the basic characteristic. Then comes the two important aspect, which is very important under depth perception. First one is monocular views and another one is binocular views. Monocular, mono means one. So monocular view mainly means that seeing the world through one eye. Uh, there are various benefits of seeing the world through one eye. So some of them are mentioned below. So monocular view enables superposition. It helps us to form perspective. It helps us to know the shadowing aspect of an object. Then comes motion parallax. Motion parallax basically simply means that uh, ability to uh, understand the moving object. So monocular views enables or helps us in these aspects. Then comes binocular views. Binocular is just uh, as opposed to monocular views, which is seeing the world in with both our eyes. Uh, under binocular view, there, are, there is something which is very important, which is rational disparity. Uh, our two eyes are at least half an inch apart. So the two eye in, there is a half an inch gap between our two eyes. 
each one and because there is a half inch gap between these two eyes uh, there is a slight different in the viewing conditions under both these eyes and this shift or the difference helps us understand the world better in terms of dimensions so binocular views is helping us understand the world under three dimensions i have attached an image here so when we when we see the like if you see the first image and the next image seeing an image through the left eye is sometimes a little different from seeing the world through the right eye so this difference helps us understand the world under three dimensions so even though like it's such a simple thing but this plays such an important role so without this ability it can be difficult for a person to see the world in three dimensions the main application value or uses of depth perception as an experiment is given below uh, people who are very accurate in terms of depth perception they can be recruited as good pilots uh, people who have very good depth perception uh, have a very good understanding of space and the surrounding so they can be very good interior designers as well painters and uh, painting and art painting and uh, like painters and artists also have very good uh, depth perception because uh, based on this ability they know they are able to better recognize the shade or the color of the object uh, based on this depth perception skill special 3d glasses which we often use in movies are also made after that comes the methodology under methodology as discussed in the previous uh, class uh, or previous uh, practical that uh, methodology includes various aspects one of the them is problem uh, the main problem or the main aim of the experiment is to compare the accuracy of depth perception under both monocular views as well as binocular views Hi then comes hypothesis hypothesis as mentioned in the previous classes hypothesis is the tentative statement which is either proved or disproved at the end of the experiment and this experiment has two hypothesis first one says binocular vision facilitates accuracy of depth perception than to monocular views so basically it says if you have a better bana if you see the world through binocular views you are better at uh, perceiving depth than from the monocular views okay so then the second hypothesis says that there will be no difference in error in perception of depth under two experimental conditions approaching series and receding series approaching series basically when the object is coming towards you receding is when the object is going far away from you so the second hypothesis says that if, whether the object is coming towards you or going far away from you uh, there will not be any error or like difference so uh, you will not make like there if something you will not make such er uh, aspects like when an object is coming close you will not uh, you will not be better at depth perception or when the object is going far you will not be better at depth perception so that is what is the simple explanation to the second hypothesis is the next one is plan the experiment is conducted under two series monocular vision and binocular vision under each conditions two series are there approaching series and receding series so what happens is there are two viewing conditions monocular views and binocular views under monocular views we are going to use approaching and receding series and under binocular views both we are going to both use both approaching and receding series so basically there are four viewing conditions monocular approaching monocular receding binocular approaching binocular receding so that is the like these are the four viewing conditions or experimental conditions the accuracy of depth perception is measured in terms of errors made that is the distance between the standard line and the variable line i'm going to show you the image in a while just in a while uh, give me one minute so see there are three lines the middle line is the flexible line when the line is coming towards you it is approaching when the center line is going far away from you it is receding so uh, if you are making error 
if you are uh, making an error to judge whether they are in the same line or far or close that is the error so however uh, like uh, we are going to measure the accuracy in terms of how how different like uh, where, like how far or close error how many errors you make during the experiment then comes variable in the first uh, first we are going to talk about independent variable uh, that is the viewing conditions uh, and experimental conditions the viewing conditions are both uh, monocular views and binocular views then comes experimental conditions experimental conditions is either receding or approaching series so which one are we using that will coming under independent variable then comes dependent variable accuracy of depth uh, accuracy of depth is measured in the form of uh, number of errors committed other relevant variable relevant variable basically means other variables which can play a role uh, in the experiment and we are trying to control that so there are variables which include speed of the movement of the variable line so the as mentioned here if you remember see this is all this image how fast or slow i am moving that can play a role in terms of accuracy of depth perception so yeah that's why it is called as a uh, relevant variable so consciously we need to make an effort that the speed remains the same all throughout the experiment head movement so uh, if you are moving your head uh, to and fro or even sideways that can play a role in terms of accuracy of depth perception so to avoid head movement we are giving a head rest which is going to help uh, the client or the participant or the subject whatever you want to call them not to shake their head and to remove the head movement uh, error then comes point of variable of uh, point of origin of variable line so from where the line starts it should be uh, irrespective of approaching or receding series uh, the line should start at only one place the size of the apparatus so yeah you saw the apparatus uh, like i'm going to show you once again so this is how this is how the apparatus looks so if the size of the apparatus differs experiment to experiment if i'm using for approaching this uh, device and then i do for another I'll do they continue the experiment in another device that can also play a role in the responses given by the subject so we have to make sure that we are doing the entire experiment in one single device distance between the subject and the apparatus uh, aperture so uh, aperture is uh, this part of the experiment uh, which from where we are looking inside so how far this aperture and the subject is that also plays a very important role if you are making the subject sit very far that can affect the accuracy if you are making the subject sit very close that can affect the accuracy of the response given by the subject then comes materials the name of the device is howard dolman depth perception apparatus so yeah um, this is the howard dolman's depth perception apparatus Uh, this consists of a long rectangular wooden box with aperture in on one end and light bulb on the other so this side of the apparatus has the aperture from aperture is basically an opening through which you can view inside so yeah so this is the opening from where you will look inside and the on the other side there is a bulb uh, the bulb is there so that uh, there is enough light and lack of light is not interfering your responses so there is one light fitted inside which enables the viewing process the size of the apparatus can be visual can be visual to facilitate both monocular and binocular cues so uh, there is an uh, okay so i'll just show you the this one see this is movable so like if you see my hand is here i can close the slide and open the slide again so 
this is very important because I'm using I can use the same device for both monocular and binocular views uh, based on the viewing conditions. I can adjust the size of the uh, apertures opening. At the center of the box, there are two rods which are fixed. The third central rod can be moved along the length of the box. I had showed you earlier, I'll show you once again. There are three rods at the center, but this center rod is movable. So it can come towards you or far away from you. So this image is taken from the aperture opening and this is how normally a person will see either through monocular or binocular view so uh, this side two side lines are fixed and the center line is flexible when the line is coming close to you it is approaching when it is going far away from you it is receding At the top of the box, there is one scale which helps us understand uh, if, the, uh, if the subject made an error to perceive the line correctly or uh, it was the subject absolutely correct. So that scale gives specific measurement in terms of centimeters and that has to be recorded. So the recording process will be mentioned to you a little later. So yeah, again, I'll show you. This is the depth perception apparatus. The light is fitted this side and the aperture is this side. And this small uh, gray uh, segment you see that is movable, that helps us to have either monocular view or binocular view. So see, yeah. So this, uh, we can shut it down, then open slightly for uh, monocular view and open further more for binocular view. This is the inside of the box. The central line is the variable line and the other two are fixed line. These variable line can come under two aspects, uh, approaching series and receding series. When the line is coming towards you, it is approaching. When it is going far away from you, it is receding. There is something which we need, which is eye patch, which can enable the process of monocular viewing conditions. Then comes chin wrist. We are, you already mentioned a chin wrist helps. Uh, it's a fixed posture to rest your chin so, so that the head movement can be minimized. Then comes writing materials, especially on the part of the examiner uh, who can, rec who uh, with, uh, basically it is important so that uh, uh, the experimenter can take a note of all the scores. Then comes a wooden screen or hiding screen that is there so that the subject doesn't know what you are writing. So it's just a screen between you and the subject. Then comes the procedure. The experiment is, condu experiment is conducted under four conditions, M, A, M, R, B, A, and B, R. MA monocular monocular means one eye and approaching approaching means coming towards you so this is the first condition then comes MR monocular receding monocular receding one eye when the line variable line is going far away from you then comes BA binocular approaching uh, seeing through two eyes and the line is approaching towards you and the last one is BR BR receding uh, is binocular receding, seeing the uh, aperture through uh, both the eyes and the line is going far away from you. So these are the four conditions you have to do the experiment on. Okay, so I mentioned earlier what is binocular vision, what is monocular vision. One thing we have to keep in mind while doing monocular vision is that the client is using a preferred one eye. So the client can decide which eye they want to see the aperture from. Then comes approaching series. Uh, the point of variable line that is kept at the further end of the box means far away from the box. And it is the variable line is moving towards the center and it approaches the subject. Then comes the receding series. Uh, the variable line is kept near the aperture near the subject. 
and uh, and from there it will start and the line will move towards the center of the apertures away from the subject this one thing we have to keep in mind these approaching and receding sub aspects has to be variably presented uh, to the client it shouldn't be like all approaching happening at once all receding happening at once uh, it should be presented at variable sequence then comes with the instructions please look through the apparatus at or aperture uh, and you can see three rods at the center the two rods at the extremes are fixed and the middle one is moved either towards you or far away from you. I will move this rod slowly. When you see these rods in the same place, tell me to stop moving this rod. So that is the instruction which we have to give for both uh, monocular views as well as under binocular views. So here are a few precautions you have to keep in mind while doing the experiment. Variable line or variable rod should be gradually moved rather than jerks. So uh, we shouldn't shake our hands while uh, shifting from um, approaching or receding series. So whatever it is, we have to make sure we are doing steady movements. Then comes the approaching series and receding series should be given at the random order. So as mentioned, we shouldn't be always doing approaching series all throughout. We shouldn't be doing receding series all throughout. Uh, so we have to give mix and match of uh, sequence. The in approaching series variable should be variable should be kept far away. Uh, should be kept far, and from there uh, it is moved gradually. In receding series, the variable line should be kept near the subject. The starting point for each trial must be varied. Uh, for development of any cue so it, the client shouldn't or the subject shouldn't develop any hints so that uh, so that is very important that we don't keep the starting point always the same an eye patch as usual is mandatory for a monocular view so that the experiment is conducted in a better manner or in a correct manner avoid head movement so headrest is important the sub very important another aspect the subject shouldn't know or get any feedback so subject shouldn't know that okay they are making so many errors the subject shouldn't also know that they are not making any error so uh, because feedback can promote okay this is the like people can create a mental image okay if the variable line is at around this area it is more accurate so the client should not know or subject should not know anything about their performance at least uh, till the experiment is over so the recording of data is uh, mentioned here so point at which subject perceives three lines falling into the same place is noted down uh, using the scale at the top of the apparatus in approaching series if the variable line crosses zero means it is very close to you and crosses zero that means when it is coming towards you and it has crossed the fixed line and it is still further towards you uh, a negative sign is given and under receding series if it has crossed the zero across the fixed line and it has gone beyond then a negative sign is given so it has to be noted that is something very important and yeah and how we are an analyzing the data so for analysis of data we have to calculate the t ratio based on the manual booklet which uh, you will learn more about how to check the manual booklet maybe once you come back to the campus or maybe during your masters you will learn more about how to check the uh, manual to calculate the t ratio besides that i will tell you all the processes before calculation of t ratio uh, in this class so yeah, so see, uh, this is a sample data which I have collected from one of my uh, subjects. So see, uh, MA mainly denotes monocular approaching, MR denotes monocular receding. So see, uh, 
it is not presented in one particular sequence it is uh, represented at different different time so one thing we have to keep in mind monocular approaching has to be 10 monocular receding has to be 10 so total 20 trials under monocular viewing conditions then comes binocular viewing conditions so uh, again this has to be 20 and this has to be presented at the random order so after calculation of uh, and uh, based on the scale given at the top you need to calculate the total and the mean once that is calculated we are going to separate the approaching and receding series and so see here mamr so all the r's will go in this side all the a's will come in this side so we have to segregate the data and then calculate the total and the mean so now comes a tricky part it's slightly uh, tricky so here comes the table three monocular and binocular viewing conditions so monocular viewing conditions again i'll go on the top so what happens in that uh, in the third table three is these monocular viewing um, uh, these da this data all the monocular viewing condition data this is subtracted by the mean and we get this table so this is basically monocular So yeah, so monocular view uh, data as mentioned and the monocular mean. So and then that is squared under this. So 12.745 into 12.745 will give 162.435. So this is how we calculate this table. Same goes with binocular viewing conditions. Now we are going to do table four. Uh, just like the previous one, we are going to do the same for approaching and receiving series. For approaching series, uh, so the data for approaching series, whatever recording we had, all the 10 response, all the 20 responses under approaching series has to be mentioned. And we have to deduct the data, uh, the approaching series data with the mean of approaching series. I'll just uh, mention it here. So this is the approaching series data. In which is which includes both monocular and binocular viewing conditions so that is here and then from the data here we are going to deduct the mean which is for for this data the mean is 4.425 so uh, 18.9 minus 4.425 has to be done and the same thing will happen for all the data mentioned here and with all the data there we are going to calculate the uh, this table so yeah and after we get this table we are going to square the data and mention it in this column so d2 d1 square is uh, the square of all the approaching series same thing we have to do for receding series we have to take the data for receding series all the data for receding series and deduct uh, the mean from the, the receding mean from there and we get d2 and from d2 and then after getting d2 we are going to do d2 square where we are just uh, uh, doing the square of the rece receding uh, data of uh, deducting the data from the mean so i assume these two tables are clear so based on all the sigma data received all the uh, total square received we are going to you uh, collect all the data use that and check it in the manual of depth perception manual is giving a uh, manual is a uh, is a guide how to score an aspect so and it is a very big book so that's why i am not able to show it right now but anyways, when you do your masters or uh, like maybe when you're back to the campus, we I can show you how to calculate the final T data based on these calculated data. So T value is calculated based on uh, approaching, receding, monocular and binocular viewing condition scores. So based on that, the T values are ob obtained. The T1 includes monocular and binocular viewing conditions and T2 includes uh approaching and receding series so this is the t value obtained 
uh, 2.958, which is for monocular and binocular viewing conditions, and 0 0.93, it is for approaching and receiving conditions based on the data given in the user manual. User manual you have used for so many electronic devices the same way uh, this experiment also has a user manual and based on the uh, data received you are going to cross check in the user manual uh, and calculate the T value obtained. Then comes the discussion uh, based on the given above data we are calculating the discussion so it is given below. So I'll directly, as in the previous experiments, we are just here sitting and describing all the data. I'll directly go to table five's uh, description. Table five shows the T value, T1 and T2 for monocular, binocular, approaching and receding series respectively. The T value obtained for is uh, the T1 value obtained is 2.958 from the table value t point is greater than uh, the table value so basically uh, there is a default value called uh, mentioned as 2.02 that is greater than 2.958 therefore it accepts the hypothesis which state that binocular viewing conditions mm -hmm. uh, facilitates accuracy of depth perception because i'll just repeat myself we are proving the first hypothesis because the T1 value is greater than 2.02. So because that is happening, we are proving the first hypothesis which state that binocular view vision facilitates accuracy of depth perception. So now we are going to check the value obtained for T2 and check the hypothesis for the second hypothesis the value obtained for t2 is 0 0.93 which is lesser than same default value 2.02 therefore t2 approves the second hypothesis that there is no significant difference in error in perception of depth under two experimental conditions so i'll repeat myself previous one was more therefore the hypothesis is proved the second one, it is low, therefore the hypothesis is proved. So we have to keep these things in mind when we do the experiment. So yeah, these are the two uh, hypotheses. We, uh, the subject has proved both the hypothesis. So same thing is mentioned during the conclusion. So from your exam point of view, you have to know what is the meaning of monocular viewing condition, binocular viewing conditions. Uh, when do we use monocular viewing condition when do we use binocular viewing conditions um, also very importantly know the application of this experiment which is depth perception when can we use depth perception uh, as mentioned in this experiment we are often using this for uh, recruitment purpose for pilots it was often used uh, right now it's not as frequently used or, or rather say a modified version of depth perception apparatus is used for recruitment of pilot. But yeah, you can always mention the same. Uh, you need to know about what is the hypothesis, what is the problem statement, and very importantly, what are the variables. Some, uh, the procedure also is very important. Instructions, you can read. Uh, it is preferred if you remember, but I don't think you will be getting that for your exam, but make sure you know or know very well about the procedure of the experiment. And you know, also need to know about how many, what are the different viewing conditions approaching and receding uh, monocular and binocular viewing conditions, how many trials are given. You have to keep a note of that. Scoring, you can skip for your exam point of view. But if you're doing this experiment on your during your master's on an actual client, yes, you need to remember that then. But for now, for your immediate exam, you can skip the scoring aspect. And all the best for your exam. Have a nice day.